As I move throughout space with the following vector valued function, imagine I'm in three dimensions right now, assuming I'm not on a line, then at every point on here, we would have a tangent vector. The idea being if I hit the banana peel in space, this is the direction I would slide. And again, every point on here would have its own unique tangent vector. Now the tangent vector tells me where I'm going right at that moment in time, but not where I'm going to be going in a moment. Because I'm turning, there must be another vector causing me to go in this direction. We call this the unit tangent vector, but there's a second vector pointed in the direction of the curve called the normal vector. In this case, it would be pointing in this direction. So what we would like to do is figure out how to find these two specific vectors. Well, first of all, we make them both into unit vectors. Then I can basically describe all of my motion as some linear combination of the two. Now, the easiest way to think of this is if I'm traveling on a line, then all of my motion is in the direction of the tangent vector. As we saw before, if I'm traveling in a circle, then all of my motion would go this way, and all other things will be some combination of the two. Now, because this is in the direction of the velocity vector, we define then the unit tangent vector t of t to be the unit vector in the direction of the velocity vector. So it's a scalar multiple of the velocity vector. This guy's a little bit trickier. Now, we proved before that if a vector has constant length, and this will have constant length because it's now a unit vector, then it must be orthogonal to its derivative. So if I consider the vector dt dt, then I know that this vector when dotted with t of t has to be zero. That means that the normal vector is going to point in the direction of dt dt. Now, this vector here is not going to be a unit vector in general, so we're going to define the unit normal vector to be the unit vector in that direction. Now that's kind of a scary looking quantity, but these are the basic definitions of the two. The unit tangent points in the direction of the velocity. The unit normal points in the direction of the derivative of the tangent vector. So now we're going to do a few examples so we can see how to walk through the process. Let's consider the following helix. We'd like to establish the unit tangent and unit normal vectors in general. We can always evaluate them at specific values of t afterwards. So let's start by finding the velocity vector. That's simple enough. And the length of this will also be relatively simple. The square here, the square here, and then the square of the last two. Now, because of the Pythagorean identity, this quantity right here is just simply 64. So we get square root of 100 or 10. So that is the length of our velocity vector. We're now going to multiply this vector by 1 tenth in order to create the unit normal vector. So the unit normal vector will simply say is 1 tenth of this, reducing fractions along the way. That will be negative 4 fifths times the sine of 2t, 4 fifths cosine of 2t, 3 fifths. Okay, so there's our unit tangent vector. Now let's go ahead and establish the unit normal vector. So now starting with the unit tangent, we want its derivative. Which is simple enough. And then once again, the length here, the square here, The square here, under the root, and because of the Pythagorean identity once again, this is just simply going to be square root of 64 20 fifths or 8 fifths. Now again, you notice how this vector is not a unit vector. So now I will multiply this vector by the reciprocal of this quantity, and that will give us the unit normal vector, 
which will be negative cosine 2t, negative sine 2t, 0. Now, it's easy enough to see that this vector right here is a unit vector because the sum of the squares will be 1. But more importantly, if I said what is t dotted with n, I'm going to get here positive 4 fifths sine times cos minus 4 fifths sine times cos, 0, I get 0. So we've also verified that they are orthogonal as well as being unit vectors. Now let's try a little more complicated example. Now let's look at a different one here. This one here has very simple terms as functions, but what we're going to find is no matter how simple my position vector is, if it's not sines and cosines, it can actually get quite complicated very, very quickly. So let's start with our velocity vector. So 2t, 2, 4t. Now the length of our velocity vector, the square of this, plus the square of this, plus the square of this, under the root. That's, what do we have, 20t squared plus 4. Now, you don't have to reduce this, but in general, you do want to reduce this because you're going to have quotients, and you'd like your quotients to be as simple as possible. So if I factor out the square root of 4, this will be 2 times 5t squared plus 1. So now I'm going to multiply this vector here by the reciprocal of this quantity here, and that will give us the unit tangent vector. Again, if I flip it over, I'll cancel the 2s, and I will get t over the root, 1 over the root, 2 over the root. Now, to ensure that this is actually a unit vector, the simplest way is look at the numerator here. Okay, I'm sorry, 2t. If I square this term, I square this term, and I square this term, and I add them up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get 5 t squared plus 1. When I square the denominator, I get 5t squared plus 1, thus ensuring the sum of the squares in this case will actually be 1. Now, at this point, this problem is no longer going to be simple. Now, at this point, I need to take the derivative of this. That is not a trivial thing. So I went ahead and did this separately, but you've got quotient rule, chain rule, all sorts of nasty stuff going on here. So to speed up the process, when I find this derivative, I get 1 over 5t squared plus 1 to the 3 halves power, negative 5t over 5t squared plus 1 to the 3 halves, and 2 over 5t squared plus 1 to the 3 halves. Now, whether your denominators are the same or not, notice that in each case, I've been able to preserve the denominators being the same. Even if you can reduce it, in this case you probably don't want to because it makes the checks much easier because then I really only have to consider my numerators. For example, we said these two have to be orthogonal. So when I do this dot product, since the denominators here and these denominators stay the same, I only really have to check numerators. So t times 1 minus 5 times t plus 4 times t, that adds to 0, so I've ensured that that dot product is 0. Now the next thing, I need to find the length of dt dt. And in this case, that length turns out to be root 5 over 5t five squared plus 1. Not obvious, but when I take the sum of the squares, I'll end up getting this. So finally, my unit normal vector which will now be the reciprocal of this multiplied through, gives me something quite ugly. I get 1 over root 5, root 5 squared plus 1. Negative 5t over root 5, root 5t five squared plus 1, and 2 over root 5, root 5t five squared plus 1. Checking to see that this is actually a unit vector, again, since my denominators are the same, if I take the sum of